succeeded a little I jumped up from the floor to the middle You think I want the credit? I don't Cause the glory ain't made for me, no I know who sits on the throne Who makes the stage and writes the songs And I know I couldn't do this on my own And as much as I can I've seen more sunshine and rain And I could thank my lucky stars But that's not where my blessings are No, they come from the Father's heart Not the sky, not chance But truth is, I'm not lucky in love So I fall to my knees and I say that I'm grateful when every morning starts So I don't thank my lucky stars Cause that's not where my blessings are No, they come from the Father's heart Not the sky, not chance, but truth is I'm not lucky in love Cause that's not where my blessings are No, they come from the Father's heart Not the sky, not chance, but truth is I'm not lucky in love Changing Lives Ministries. I'm Pastor Michael Bradford. I got a word for you on today that I know is going to be a blessing for you. So if you're watching this, I want you to like it, share it, let your friends know what's going on, because I'm telling you right now, this word is going to bless you. I'll be back. I want to talk about worldliness this morning. But before I do, I want to talk about the Bible. The Bible says something that, and, and I want you to bring your minds and hearts into it. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was the chief cornerstone. The Bible says he was the chief cornerstone that the builders 
rejected. Amen? And, and it's interesting to understand that because they needed the chief cornerstone for the building to be right. And Jesus Christ, if we understand Scripture correctly, represents truth. So Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. He's the truth that man always wants to reject. Because a man doesn't want to build on the foundation of truth. Are you with me this morning? Amen. So, so sometimes I was thinking about this, and I said sometimes we understand salvation, but we miss redemption. We understand salvation. We understand that God saves us, but we don't understand the whole process of how he redeemed us. Amen? Because the reality is that God purchased us from something. Okay, he brought you, we you say, out of darkness, huh? Into what? Into the marvelous light. And sometimes that even when we get saved, we still forget that the redemptive work of Jesus Christ is still going on. You know, that when you get saved, you know, you might have you might have stopped doing some some sexual sins, but he's still paid to keep you from lying too. You know, that this redemptive work is still going on, that, that the things that are going on in your life, that he died to buy you out of that. And he purchased you, amen, from darkness and brought you back into relationship with him. Are you listening to me? And so I have to let this redemptive work of Jesus Christ continue in my life. So this is what I mean by I say every day I'm becoming more and more like Christ. But every day I'm, I'm letting the old man die and, 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 and becoming more like Jesus Christ. Because I begin to understand that he purchased me from the enemy. And now that I belong to him, I have to lurk the, let the work of the cross continue to mature me. So that I become the Christian that he wants me to be. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. So I want to read a definition because... Worldliness tries to creep into the church. And if you're not careful, you'll start thinking that the world knows how to win souls better than Jesus. And you'll start using programs that the world has come up with. Amen. Instead of doing what the Bible said, he said, if I be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up, then I'll do what? He said, I'll draw all men unto me. But a lot of times we're trying to use gimmicks and things to get men to Jesus Christ. When Jesus said, just tell the gospel. Just preach the truth. Somebody said preach the truth. And if you preach the truth, the truth will bring them in because the truth is the only thing that can save you. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So John Rittenball, he, he did a definition of worldliness. And when I saw it, I really liked it. So I, I wanted to bring it to you. He said worldliness, this is the definition of worldliness. He said the love of beauty, that which one finds attractive, appealing, or desirable. Watch this without a corresponding love of righteousness. Listen to me. The love of beauty, uh -huh, that which one finds attractive, appealing, or desirable, but there's not a corresponding love of righteousness. Give me Genesis 2 and 15. And what that means is a lot of times is when we like the way something looks, we like how attractive it is, it's appealing, we want it, but we don't want it according to righteousness. Are you walking with me? Me and sisters, they'll knife you, but they won't wife you. They want you. Love your beauty. Love what you bring to the table. But how they want it is corrupt. Oh, look at how y'all looking at me. You know, sir, she'll fight you, but she won't life you. She'll compete instead of complete. You know, you, you, you want it, but you don't want it properly. Am, am I talking to anybody? And so what, what, what he's saying is that we find things attractive and appealing and it's desirable, but we don't have a corresponding love of righteousness to handle it properly. Genesis 2 and 15, watch this. What does it say? And the Lord God uh -huh. took the man and put him into the garden of Eden. Now, the Bible said God took the man. Now, this is interesting because he said, and he put him into the Garden of Eden, which means he wasn't there at one point. Amen. Oh, this is so good. This is so good to understand. Because a lot of times, ladies, you don't understand. You were born into the lap of luxury. We wasn't. See, ladies, you all were created in the garden. We were created on the rocks. Are y'all hearing me? And he took us and he put us. 
Hello, somebody. Into the garden eating. And then what did he say? To dress it. Uh-huh. And to keep it. Uh-huh. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, uh -huh. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Free. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. thou shalt not eat of it. Yes. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, what would happen? thou shalt surely die. Now, I want, you, I want you to look at this because... This, this, this whole thing that God does, he tells Adam, I want you to dress it and keep it. Okay? That's a righteous way of handling beauty. I want you to dress it and keep it. When you become worldly, you use it and abuse it. And so what God is saying is you have this appreciation of what I've given unto you, but the way you show appreciation is how you handle a thing. Bill Withers had a song. He said, you just keep on using me until you. Y'all know that song? See, see, that wasn't dress and keep. That was use and abuse. And sometimes Satan gets us into perversion where we don't appreciate beauty and the proof of it is how we handle it. Yeah. I should tell you that my mother and father, uh, one Easter, they bought me a suit and, 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 and it was a suit. I told you the story before. Uh, it was one of those suits that James West used to wear in the movie called, a show called The Wild Wild West. Anybody remember The Wild Wild West? Yeah. And, and, and James was a, he was the lead role cowboy, bad cowboy just you know dressed sharp look good and he had this little short jacket that he used to wear with the pants and my mother and father they bought me one and it was my favorite suit it was navy blue it had the red stitching in it and the jacket was short and went down and had the weird buckle coming across the front and you couldn't tell me nothing when I put it on <laughs> I was clean had a red shirt that they were burgundy. Actually, they hit the buttons and the, the designs in the suit. And when I went to church and I had on, y'all don't know nothing about this young folk, but I had on platform shoes. <laughs> platform shoes. I mean, I was standing back of my heels, almost like high heel shoes for, in men's style. Just, 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 you know, the heels were thick and the heels were different colors and swayed on the tip. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Hey, Amen. When I walked in the church, I had a little swag, you know, because... You had to let them know that the man had arrived. And, 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 and when I got home, I, I, I took my suit off. And when my father came in the room, the suit was on the floor. And my father said, you don't appreciate what we bought you. I said, Daddy, I, I, I prom this, this is my favorite suit. You don't understand. I, I, I want to wear that suit back to back Sundays. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know you got to wear something different every Sunday. But, 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 but I, they would say, no, you can't wear that this time. You know, I said, Dad, you understand? I love this suit. He said, you don't love it. If you love it, be on, it wouldn't be on the floor. And I couldn't get it because it was my favorite suit. But what he was telling me was, you, if you really appreciated the beauty of it, you would dress and keep it. Right. The way I know you don't really care like you say is because you're using and abusing it. Yeah. You know why? Because it wasn't what I was supposed to give the suit is what the suit was giving me. See, when you come to the table and you're not bringing you, but you come to be a consumer, see, then it's not about the product. And so what daddy was trying to teach me is when you care about something, there's a way that care looks. So God says to Adam, I want you to dress and keep, in other words, tend to it and keep it. Make sure that it stays beautiful. Don't use and abuse it. And what we see in relationships now, people are using and abusing. They're not tending and keeping. Am I talking to anybody? So when I really begin to understand, I was like, okay, I finally get what he's saying that had I loved it, I'd have hung it up. Had I loved it, I'd have made sure that it was in its proper place. Had I loved it, he wouldn't have found it on the floor. And sometimes we think because we like something, that gives us the right to mistreat something. But when you really like it properly, somebody said you dress and keep. You know, you don't use and abuse it. And you have to ask yourself, in my life right now, when it comes to holiness, am I dressing and keeping? Or am I using and abusing? Am I, am I trying to see how close to Egypt can I get without falling over? Am, am, I, am, I, am I telling everybody that things are okay? And am I doing what it takes to please my flesh and not please God? 
Because sometimes we become the epitome of what we're supposed to please instead of God being the epitome of what we're supposed to please. So God said, I want you to dress it. Somebody say dress it. And he said, keep it. Somebody say keep it. And when you watch what's happening in today's society, everything that man is putting his hand to, he's destroying He's destroying. He, we, you know, there are things that are beautiful because what God made is so beautiful that man just can't eradicate it. And we have places that we like to go see because we, want, we like the grandeur of it and the, and the beauty of it. But in reality, man every day is using and abusing this planet and causing harm to come. Me and Sister Marilyn, I was at the shop and she was doing my nails and we were talking, the song that came on, and uh, we were talking about the song that it came on. And she said something, she said, you know, she said, that was such a good time. And when I, when I listened to her, I said, I, 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 said, I said, you know what, it was. And what she was saying was, in this time, when this particular music was playing, we weren't afraid. We trusted that society was in a good place. We weren't, we weren't worrying about breakout of viruses and, you know, shortages and high spiking prices and, you know, what was happening, the economy collapsing, because it was a good time. And we could trust, you know, you could trust when you was on a job that, you know, the, the company was going to take care of you after you had given services. Now you're expendable. Now no matter what you do, it's all about the dollar. It's not about you as an individual. You know, and so man now is ravishing the earth. They're not dressing and keeping. They're using and abusing. And I'm going to tell you something. God is concerned about how we handle what he's given us. Not just product, but people. We don't care like we used to about people. When was the last time you ran into somebody and witnessed? I'm talking about you saw that something was wrong and you witnessed. Talking to a man yesterday and Christian man and told me, he said, you know, I went in the store and he said, I walk in and now, now he saved and sanctified. And he said, he saw a young lady, she tall and beautiful. Y'all hear me? And so, you know, they make eye contact. Y'all know how it go. I have to say that because y'all look at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they make eye contact, but, you know, nothing is said. And so he comes out to the car, and when he comes out to the car, he looks over. She's in her car, and she's just in her top. You know, making sure, you know, he, and, and, and he said, you, you kind of see through it a little bit, you know. Y'all know how, how the world dressed. And so she dressed the top. He said, he looked over. He had his window down. When she looked at him, he said, was that for me? And he said, I didn't say, do you know Jesus? I immediately went into carnal thinking. Oh, y'all, look how y'all looking at me. He said, y'all don't do that, right? You know, he said, he said, he said and it, as soon as I said it, I felt the conviction of it. Amen. That I had took a moment and made it about me when it was a moment that I could have made about God. Are oh, y'all listening to me? Yeah. Huh? He said, he, he watched this operating from a used and abused platform. Not address and keep it. And this is what God is talking to us about. That nowadays you are, we have become basically afraid and when you move in fear you become a user I need y'all to understand what I'm saying because you cannot treat things properly when you are fearful and my definition of fear what fear produces with people is non-relational activity that whenever I am afraid of you I will do things that relationships don't require because watch this, I begin to save me, and you become the enemy of me. Am I talking to anybody? So I got to begin to understand that God did, a, somebody said he did a work on the cross. 
And when he put them in the garden, he said, I want you to dress it and keep it, not use and abuse. And you have to look at your life and you have to look around you and say, the things that God has blessed me with, the people that he's brought into my life, am I using and abusing or am I dressing and keeping? Am I tending to them or is it all about what I get out of it? You don't have to reevaluate your circumstances. You got to reevaluate your situation. Are you being to people what you're supposed to be, or are you using people to get what you think you should have? Am I helping anybody? So watch this. I have to have, along with appreciation of beauty, I have to have a love of righteousness. Righteousness, 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 righteousness. Seek ye first. The kingdom of what? God and his what? Watch this. Righteousness. And it was the Bible said, if you do that, all of these other things will be what? Well, now, now this is important because God's saying, if you seek my way of doing things, and if you seek proper relationship with me, watch this, your prayer life would decrease. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Because you wouldn't have to pray for half the things you're asking for. See, you missed it. The reason you got to keep coming back to the throne is because you're coming to consume it, as James said, upon your lust. You're not coming to me because you want me to help you dress and keep. You're coming to me because you want to use and abuse me. Wow. And he said that if you treat me right, somebody said treat me right. Listen to me, unless you're crazy, if somebody treats you right, you're going to give them all you got. You don't do people wrong that treat you right. I've never seen somebody get rid of good help. When you got good help, you do whatever it takes to keep it. Huh? And so God is saying, watch this, if you just seek me first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, this is all this other stuff, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Because lovers take care of love ease. God said, I would take care of you if you weren't trying to use and abuse. If you were dressing, tending to, and keeping, tending, tending to what? My word. Keeping what? My word. Tending and keeping. No, you using the word and switching it and making it your own revelation. Huh? And abusing it to see how much you can get away with because you think God is a hard taskmaster. Wow. Am I talking to anybody? So watch this, 1 Peter 1 and 13. 1 Peter 1 13. Y'all all right? Tell your neighbor, you got to live better. Yep, 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 yep. See, 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 when you preach messages like this, all the shout lead. And they didn't even help you out before I got up, so I don't even. <laughs> y'all with me? Yeah. Amen. They, you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm I saw y'all sitting there looking. I don't know if the Memorial Day hangover. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Because like Shell was singing. Yeah. You hear me? But, you know, you know, I don't know. I felt like can these bones. See, 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 this, see, 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 this is back to the point I'm making. Did you come to dress and keep or use and abuse? See, did, did you come to be entertained or be part of the service? See, a lot of times people come to church, they want us to get y'all up. We ain't no pom-pom girls. No, no, I need you guys. Give me a J. Give me an E. Give me an S U S. Give me a C. No, we ain't, we ain't in all that. <laughs> No, 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 y'all got to get it. Y'all got to get it because you come here looking to be moved instead of move. And then you go home talking about, you know, the service was okay. No, you okay, boo. You came in here okay. And you left okay because you didn't really come. You didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't enter his courts with praise. You came looking to be hyped. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. We, that ain't us. We not hype men. See how y'all looking at me? I'm telling y'all the truth. And that's why, watch this, that's why you leave unchanged. 
Because you want entertainment. You want us to get you in the mood. Watch this. You using and abusing instead of dressing and keeping. Y'all with me? So watch this. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. What does it say? Wherefore, uh -huh. gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the loins of your mind, your subconscious mind. Be what? Be sober. And what? And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, now, now, I want you to hear this. He said, gird up the loins, somebody say, of your mind. Of your mind. He said, be, somebody say, sober. Be sober. Watch this. And, and, and this be sober. He said, what I want you to be sober. He said, and I want you to hope to the end. Somebody say, to the end. See, because the race is not given to the swift or to the strong. But he that endureth unto the what? And, watch this, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, he said, I come that you might have life. Yeah. And life more what? Abundant. Here's what you got to understand. That this job that he did for you on the cross, this, this thing that he did for you on the cross, you're supposed to hope to the end. In other words, you know, you understand that this was a cost. This was a sacrifice. Yes. And this grace, God's riches at Christ's expense that he gave unto you, that this grace that you are benefiting from, you watch this, you take that and you run with it. You don't, you don't part-time living saved. Amen. Amen. Ooh, we is quiet in here. You don't get days off. Amen. You don't have floating shifts. So true. <laughs> Are you understanding Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. This is a lifestyle. Yes, it is. Lifestyle. Yes, that you have to live this 24-7. You're not off duty ever. Ever. Amen. I said Preach, ever. Preacher. Amen. That when you accepted the cause of the cross, that you committed your life to the end to Jesus. Yes, this is this, this is what we did, huh? That yes. like Peter said, where else can we go? You are the one. Amen. Somebody say I'm saved. I'm saved. Huh? And so this hope of grace <laughs> as obedient what? As obedient children. Uh-huh. Not fashioning yourselves uh -huh. according to the former lust in your ignorance. Watch this. He said, Don't act like you did when you didn't know me. Amen. Your former self, the, the, the you you used to be. He said, don't bring that you to me. I want to meet the you that I turned you into. Yes. And sometimes we act like we haven't been shifted. We act yes. like that the work of the cross right. didn't work on us. Like the blood still don't work. Tell your neighbor, the blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still shifts you. The blood Amen. still changes you. The blood still washes you. Hallelujah. And I know a lot of times we don't want to hear old messages like this and old preaching like this. But, but let me tell you something. You know, the foundation, that's how we all got to get it right. Huh? You, you know, just because you know, you know a little bit don't mean you leave the foundation. Oh, y'all with me? But as he which hath what? Called you is holy. But as he, who is he? Jesus. Yeah, but he, well, God who has called you is holy, so be ye what? So be ye holy uh -huh. in and, all manner uh -huh. of conversation. Somebody say, watch your mouth. Because that's the number one way you don't act like them. Your language. You can't keep your mouth right. Am I talking to anybody? You just, you just say stuff out of order, out of pocket, whatever you feel because you grown. Somebody say, that's not holiness. He came to brighter your tongue. You can't shut up. I just... Y'all know what I'm talking about? I just had to tell it. That's a demon. It's pride. You have no humility. You cannot bow out. 
I was talking to uh, Tommy, Novell, and David yesterday, and we 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 were talking about you know encounters that we had, and we're talking about situations, and 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 I was telling them, you know, the young men, a lot of bravado. You understand know what I'm saying? I was once one of them, you know, as long as I was one of them, but but God brought me out. <laughs> And, and, and I'm talking to him, and each one, watch this, had been confronted by somebody that was acting like an idiot. And what they were talking about is how they started to just smash him. Y'all listening to me? You know, because, see, young men carry pride. Men carry pride, period. And I had to tell Tommy, you got two boys. You know, they can't grow up without you. David, you got a son, two sons and a daughter. They can't grow up without you. Veli, you got children, five children. They can't grow up without you. And what's worth that? Are y'all listening to me? Well, is your family worth your pride? And sometimes in moments, we, all we see is the uprising, but we don't see the end. And my father used to say to me that five seconds can cost you five years. So you got to make sure that in these, these pivotal moments that you don't make bad decisions because, watch this, people hook to your decisions. Right. Did y'all hear what I said? There were plenty of times, you know, got my, 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 my 300, y'all heard me talking about on the ground heading to try to do something, and Sister Lena saying, you pastor. Look how y'all looking. That's before Novell got saved. You had me acting out of pocket. <laughs> I'm gonna tell it all. <laughs> trying to get, trying to catch up with Novell. <laughs> Amen, Novell. Amen. Amen. Novell had to get me straight on another young man. Told the young man, hang up on him. You know how he is. <laughs> acting, watch this, acting raggedy. Using and abusing. Not keeping. Intending to, acting like, watch this, acting like y'all don't need me. Watch this, bigger, acting like I don't need y'all. This is a, uh, can I say it how I feel it? This is a doggone community. Are <laughs> oh, y'all hearing me? Listen to me. If Sister Angie makes a decision and it hurts her, we all hurt. Everybody that loves her is good. So you don't get a right to act like you a Lone Ranger. You know, Jude talks about contending for the faith and understanding that when you make decisions, it affects everybody else who claim that same cause. Amen. Is this making any sense? It don't matter how close I am to you. When you say when you act up, they say that's what church folk look like. Are y'all understanding me? Yes. And I have to say to these young men, don't risk it all over an idiot. Abigail had to say it to David, you're going to kill Nabal? He's a fool. Right. See, y'all ain't hearing me. Right. You don't throw Amen. everything away over a fool that ain't even got nothing to live for. They, listen to me, the reason they can act that way because they ain't got nothing anyway. And you're going to blow everything you building over somebody that ain't building nothing. Because builders move differently. Builders understand they have things they have to protect. And you can't let a moment of being rash cost you a lifetime of things that God is trying to get to you because you want to show who you are in a moment. Is this making any sense? Tell you that, get your mind together. Get your mind together. Am I helping anybody? Yes. So watch this. He said, be ye holy as what? I am holy. Uh-huh. Watch this. This is important because you heard me say that. He said, be ye holy. He didn't say, be ye apostolic. Amen. He didn't say, be ye Baptist. Did he say it? Did he say, be ye Kojic? No. What did he tell you to be? Be holy. Because see, these denominations have ways. He said, I didn't ask you to be your denomination. Oh, y'all getting quiet on me. He said, I asked you to be me. Hallelujah. I asked you to be me. I asked you to be what I am. I'm holy. Tell your neighbor, be holy. Watch this. 
the love of beauty must be encased in a love of righteousness. So I thought about it. We talk about this all the time, the beauty of holiness. The beauty. Somebody say the beauty. The beauty. Of holiness. I wanted to see, because I hear these phrases. We grew up with these phrases. But I don't know if we know what they mean because it's church language. Church lingo. You know, you not think so in good soil. You know, stuff we say. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, you know, charitable, chari- what is it, charitable giver? What is it called? Char- cheerful, 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 cheerful. Don't act like y'all know what I'm talking about. Cheerful. We say all these phrases, but everybody don't know what they mean. Watch this. And some of us don't. So I'm looking up, I'm looking up the beauty of holiness. And watch this. Here's what I defined it as. Y'all ready? The intrinsic attractiveness, watch this, of set-apartness. Watch this. Intuitively, we recognize, watch this, that set-apartness is beautiful. Mm. That what he did for me when he sanctified me is he set me apart. And when you get it right, you stop fighting to fit. Because he did a work in you. And watch this. He brought you out of what you were in and he set you apart. Oh, this is so important. Because the number one need of man is acceptance. And he literally, watch this, took you from where you were and said, now I'm going to place you from here to here. And the beauty of holiness is recognizing that this work he did to move me from this position to this position, intrinsically, I see the value of it because I'm not what I was. And I'm not trying to live over here like I did. Because I see the beauty of where he placed me. And because I see the beauty of where he placed me, I don't revert back to these ways because he gave me a better life. He gave me a better opportunity. He made me a new creature in Christ. And old things are what? Pass away. And behold, look, all Things have what? Become new. Watch this. And intrinsically, I appreciate it. Appreciation isn't a thank you. Appreciation is an action. I appreciate it. Watch this. By living how they live on this side. Yes. Amen. Oh, it's quiet in here. Amen. I wrote some things down. I I, I can flee Babylon because I see the beauty of what Jesus did for me, the grace. I can renew my mind because I know what grace has provided for me. And watch this. And now I dress and keep my salvation. I don't use and abuse it. I dress and keep it. I make sure people understand. I'm glad. Listen to me. I'm not in the mall scared to say I'm saved. This is important because we don't want to let people know, depending on the crowd, we quiet about what he did for us. Is this making sense? Somebody say set apartness. Because when I'm not doing it, I love you, but I won't love you right if I'm using and abusing. So my, what I see that's beautiful, I don't reach for it if it's not controlled by righteousness. Oh, y'all got to get that. That, that, that when, I, when I look at you, I see your beauty, but the way I handle you is controlled by my righteousness in God. 
So I don't get to treat you any kind of way. See, see the, watch this. My, my, my respect for righteousness controls my mouth. Amen. Ooh, you know, you know, this is, oh, they quiet this morning. You know, no, because I because I'm righteous, I just don't say anything. Watch this. That's because right. hurting you matters. That's right. So I have to tend and keep, dress and keep. I don't use an abuse. I can't say anything because I'm grown no more. Love leaves you better. I said again, I said, love leaves you better. Love don't leave you wounded. When you leave the situation, somebody was wounded, what did you act in? Did you act in love or did you use and abuse? Huh? Did you tend and dress? Did you care about what was happening with this person or did you use and abuse? Are you all with me? And, 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 and even if you're not wrong, you know, when you understand love and how you're supposed to be, you'll make sure it's right even when there is no offense. Oh, it's so quiet in here. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining our live feed and broadcast. We do appreciate your time, but we are eager and excited that you're joining our community, our faithful community of followers and believers, people who are life changers, who are world changers. And so what we're going to ask you to do is if you have a desire to give because this message is feeding you and providing everything that you need to help you get to that next level, to present your best self, then what we're going to ask you to do is partner with us. No gift is too big or too small in the kingdom of God that is going to be utilized to reach the untaught, the unchurched, and the uncommitted. So we thank you so much for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you will continue to do as a life changer. Thank you so much. Remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you.